going to talk to you about a study that, uh, uh, that I did for my PhD project about the validation of uh, earlier developed resilience indicators for dairy cattle uh, that were based on milk yield data. So first of all, it's good always to define really what, yeah, what you mean with resilience, resilience because it can differ quite a bit between uh, people. Um, so cows are always subject to all kinds of disturbances uh, throughout their lives. For example, uh, pathogens or heat waves, and they can result in reduced functioning of uh, cows. Um, but there are differences between how much cows are affected. Some cows get uh, really ill and they stop producing uh, uh, milk and other cows uh, yeah, just keep on, keep on doing what they uh, were doing. And uh, those last cows, that's what we would call resilient cows. So resilience specifically uh, is the ability to be minimally affected by disturbances and if affected to quickly recover. Um, so whole, my whole PhD project is about the development of resilience indicators uh, for dairy cattle that can be used in, uh, yeah, in breeding uh, to improve resilience. But uh, as Morten already also said, uh, true resilience is not really uh, yeah, measurable, so that's why we need indicators. And these indicators were, um, yeah, we derived from a theory from uh, Martin Schreffer. He's an ecologist from, uh, from our... <clears throat> from our university as well. And he says that um, uh, fluctuations of longitudinal traits of a system uh, describe the response and recovery to small natural disturbances. And um, because these longitudinal traits are sensitive to disturbances. So he says specifically that you can quantify these fluctuations by calculating the variance or LN bar as Morten uh, mentioned, um, or the autocorrelation. And um, the variance uh, tells you something about how much the trait deviates from the baseline. Um, so uh, more resilient animals are expected to deviate less from the baseline and then have a lower variance. Um, and uh, autocorrelation tells you something about how similar the record is uh, or the trait is um, between subsequent time points. Um, and if you start to see a pattern in the trait, like uh, a, a slower recovery, for example, you start to see a higher similarity between subsequent time points, and then you start to see a higher autocorrelation. So that's a sign of a lack of resilience. Um, yeah, this is illustrated by these figures um, that I took from a paper from Schaeffer. So on the left uh, is a resilient system with a low autocorrelation and a low variance, and on the right is a less resilient system with a high autocorrelation and a high variance. So we applied this theory to um, daily milk yield data in, in cattle because uh, daily milk yield is uh, or milk yield is sensitive to disturbances and it's now available on a lot of farms because of uh, automatic milking systems, for example. Um, so we calculated um, the variance and autocorrelation uh, of the, the daily milk yield data, but we did not do it just on the data itself, but we first corrected the raw data for the a milk yield curve because the shape of the curve can also have an effect on variance and autocorrelation. But we're not interested in that. We're only interested in the short-term fluctuations. So if you fit a um, if you fit a curve through the lactation and you take the residuals, you end up with uh, the right figure. And that's what we're interested in. And that's what we calculated the variance and the autocorrelation on. So just to show you an example of what that looked like in our data set. On the left, there's an uh, example of a cow with a low variance and low autocorrelation. And on the right, there's a cow with a high variance and high autocorrelation. So according to the theory, the, the left one should be resilient and the right one not resilient. And that seems quite plausible to me, at least for these two cows. So um, we estimated heritabilities for these, uh, yeah, for these resilience indicators. And they were both uh, heritable, so you can change them uh, through selection. And we also had some first indications that they indicate resilience because they had favorable genetic correlations with some other traits that are uh, related to resilience, like longevity and health traits. But there's a problem here because health and longevity is just not exactly the same as resilience because resilience was the ability to be minimally affected by disturbances 
as to quickly recover. So, um, yeah, the, the extent to which animals are affected by disturbances and the recovery time, that's not covered at all yet by the existing uh, breeding goal traits. So the question that I want to answer in this presentation is, uh, do animals with a good genetic merit for the resilience indicators, do they really have a smaller decline in milk yield and a quicker recovery after disturbance uh, than cows that have a bad genetic merit for the resilience indicators? Um, yeah, for this we needed some kind of disturbance to, to check this with, like a real life disturbance. And for this we uh, chose a disturbance affecting the herd milk yield, an unknown disturbance affecting the herd milk yield. So this needs some more explanation, I think. Um, when you look at the average milk yield of all the cows in a herd over time, um, and you suddenly see a drop in that milk yield, then apparently something happened to the cows, which made them have a drop in milk yield. Um, you don't know what happened, but at least there happened some disturbance. So then you can start to look at how did individual cows respond to that disturbance. So that's what we uh, did. So this is the design of the study. Uh, we had a daily milk yield data of about 200,000 cows. And from those cows, we took the ones that had yield data during the uh, herd disturbance that was selected for their herd. And then we calculated for the individual cows how they responded to that disturbance. So uh, some milk response traits we calculated for them. Um, First of all, we um, fitted uh, a moving median of uh, 21 days uh, for each individual cow to set a baseline. And then the first trait we calculated was the drop length, which was the difference in days between when the cow dropped below the baseline and when it reached the baseline again. And the drop depth is the, like, the absolute difference between like, the lowest milk yield and the milk yield on the day before the drop. The total yield loss is the absolute sum of all the uh, deviations during the drop. So that's what we calculated for yeah, all these, uh, these cows. And now we estimated the gen genetic correlations between these, these new traits about the herd disturbance with the variance and autocorrelation, so the resilience indicators that we defined earlier, so that we could see if the variance and autocorrelation were related with like how much a cow was affected by disturbance and how quickly she recovered. And we did that only for the, so we took the variance and autocorrelation only for cows that were not also on the left-hand side to avoid a direct uh, association. So here are the first um, genetic correlations between the variance and these, uh, yeah, the herd, herd, yeah, herd disturbance traits. And, um, yeah, the variance was very strongly genetically correlated with the depth of the drop and the total yield loss. So that was yeah, actually a really nice result. Um, but um, the variance and the depth of the drop and the total yield loss were all also strongly correlated with uh, milk yield level. So we had to adjust these correlations for milk yield level as well. Um, and then we obtained partial correlations and they are shown here. So. Um, they are a bit lower, but they are still strong. So this means that among cows with um, the same milk yield level, the ones uh, that produce milk more stably are also less affected by uh, at least these herd disturbances. So this is really nice confirmation that variance indeed tells you something about one aspect of resilience and how much a cow is affected by disturbances. Uh, variance was not really related with the length of the drop, so kind of recovery time. But when we go to the autocorrelation, we see a very strong correlation there. Not with the depth of the drop and the total yield loss, but with the recovery time. So that's also really nice because that um, yeah, it shows um, that the autocorrelation covers the other aspect of resilience, which was recovery time. So in conclusion, um, based on this study, I would say that the resilience indicators based on daily milk yield are suitable for selecting for better resilience. First of all, because they're heritable, and then because the variance was genetically associated with the, the strength of response to actual disturbances and autocorrelation with the um, recovery rate after actual disturbances. So if we would put those two together in a resilience uh, index, uh, we should be able to improve all the aspects of resilience simultaneously. 
Um, so with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. And I would like to thank uh, the sponsors, Gentor and Breed for Foods, and then also CRV for providing the data. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.